Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. Today, we're going to take the mystery out of the brand new Benjamin Aquila. And this is their Craftsman series. These are gorgeous, and we're going to get into this in a second. If you didn't know, Aquila, that actually means pack leader. So we're going to see if this is actually a pack leader. But before we get started here, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button down below there in the corner. Um, subscribing, for those of you who don't know, doesn't cost you anything. There's really not a whole obligation. There's nothing to do but just click on that, and it just shows I have more subscribers, which helps the channel. So I would appreciate that. Also, don't forget, I hooked you guys up on a couple of discounts. One was the firearm guards. Those are those moisture-absorbing blocks that you can put in with your, you know, anything where there's potential moisture in with your guns or what have you. And also, um, Pinty, I got a discount code for you with them. It's also air gun. So remember the term air gun. It'll work in both those, uh, both those websites. I'll put links down below. With the firearm guards, you're going to get free shipping. With Pinty, you're going to get 15% off site-wide, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's get back into this gun. Um, as I said, this is the uh, PCP version of the new um, Aquila. And I'm going to just kind of show you how it comes here. It's actually packed really nice with this foam rubber. Pull the cover off here. But this is what you get in the box. You can see this. We'll pull it out here so you can see the whole thing. But this is what you get. So obviously you get the rifle. You get a couple of... Uh, 12 round magazines. These are um, both 12 round magazines. You get a little kit here which comes with a uh, Picatinny rail on the front. It comes with a Foster quick release. All the Allen wrenches for pretty much everything on here. They even include this large Allen wrench so you could take the uh, stock um, off the assembly there. Anyway, so this is the Aquila. Let's put this on a um, so Let's put this on a couple of pads here and let's get this out of the way. All right. Get that out of the way. Set this up on here for you. All right. This is a bull pump. Those of you who don't, don't know what a bull pump is, the cool thing about these is you still have a full length barrel. They just move the entire assembly backward. So they move it all backward. So it's so it compacts everything. In fact, this entire um, rifle is actually 32 inches, the whole thing, roughly. 32 inches. Not bad. All right, so let's talk about uh, what we've got here, and then we'll get into a little bit more of this. Um, this is a Turkish walnut stock, and this thing is just gorgeous, if you can see this. It is just beautiful. The finish on this is amazing. Kind of has a nice little textured grip here. I mean, it's really, really nice. So what we got here, Turkish walnut. Uh, the gun weighs, walnut's heavy, as you know, it's a heavy wood. This weighs about seven and a half pounds. It has a 280 cc um, air cylinder. That's what's gonna hold your air here. We've got a nice full length uh, Picatinny rail uh, on the top here for your optics, because it's gonna need an optic. This does not shoot open sights, that's for sure. Anyway, the 280cc uh, air cylinder that holds uh, 3,000 psi, or that would be 206 bar. Um, you have a little adjustment right here as far as the transfer port. So you can change the velocity. You can set it at the minimum, go to the maximum, go halfway in between. But we'll test that on the minimum and the maximum. They claim that you can get up to about 60 shots. The maximum velocity is about 1,000 feet per second. They're claiming about 32 foot-pounds of energy. Shrouded barrel, and uh, it's a built-in suppressor, so hopefully it'll keep that quiet. It's got a two-stage two trigger here. Um, from what I see, there's you can adjust the trigger shoe on it as far as um, the height and the direction, so you can customize that um, for your own finger and your own liking. Uh, back here, you have a little adjustable cheek rest. You just push the button in here and it'll slide back. And this is for you to rest your cheek on. And then, you can slide it back for your adjustment there. And then if you loosen this up, you can actually adjust the height of it as well. So that's pretty cool. And it's pretty much, uh, the gun's pretty much ambidextrous with the exception of the lever is going to be 
on the right side. But us left-handers, we're used to that. We can handle that. Um, so you, you have the adjustable cheek piece, which is nice. They also set this thing up for, uh, you have uh, for sl a sling. You got your swivel mounts here and on the front. It's already set up. And then I kind of briefed on this real quick. On the front here, you see where the screw is right here? They actually set it up for a, uh, you can screw in a Picatinny mount. So if you want to put a bipod on the front or what have you. So we'll, we'll test all that out. And I said before, this is kind of nice. They include the uh, quick release uh, foster fitting. A lot of times you have to purchase that separate when you get these guns, but it's included with this one, which is nice. So overall, very, very good looking gun. And you know what? Um, Benjamin packs this all up with a five year warranty. So you're covered for five years. So let's, uh, let's see how well it performs. We'll take it through our usual gamut. Oh, what's this retail for? Uh, retailing for about $599, so close to $600. And uh, I didn't, oh, I forgot to mention that you do have the, your nice gauge right here on the side. It's nice and visible. You don't have to flip the gun upside down to do it. Oh, and then let me, let me give you a close-up real quick on the magazines. So these are your typical magazines. They load really, really easy. You basically, there's an arrow on here. You rotate it around. And you'll see there's a little opening right here. And uh, just for fun, we'll put a pellet in there for you. So you rotate this all the way around until it stops. Put your finger underneath the bottom of it, just like this. And you drop a pellet in, right? And then you can start loading the pellets in one at a time. See this? Just like this. Go one in here, and then just boom, boom, boom. You fill them all the way around, and then you go back to the resting position, which is right there. That's it. Um, this gun can be decocked. Show you this. You just basically hold on to the lever, you pull the trigger, and then just ease the bolt forward. Uh, magazine goes in very easy. See this direction here? Just slide this thing in straight across just like this. It goes straight in. Of course I can't see where the darn, but yeah, you just set this in here just like that. Your magazine is set just like that. Alright, so let's get that out of there. Once again, decock, hold the arm back, pull the trigger, slide it forward. There you go. Okay, so with that, let's go out and test this thing. Let's see how well it performs, and then we'll come back and talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. Okay, let's test our Aquila with some velocity. What I'm going to do, this has a power adjustment. And what that does, it just regulates the amount of air that goes through the transfer port. So we're going to take five shots at full power. Then I'm going to shut it all the way down to the lowest setting. We'll take five shots there and we'll average it out, see what type of velocity we get. Okay, so shot number one. Let's see what we got here. 996. Shot number two. 997. Shot number three. 1,000. Shot number four. 997 and one more shot 995 not bad okay we're shooting um, just so you guys know we're just shooting some Benjamin some 14.3 grain some of the hollow points just so we can get an idea okay now let's switch to low power and see how many shots we get on that okay so now five shots on low power setting four sixty seven Four sixty-six. Shot number three. Four seventy-six. Shot number four. Five nineteen. And one more shot. Five twenty-four. Okay. So that's at the very, very lowest setting. You see how quiet it was too. Very, very quiet. But that's, uh, here's your average feet per second for that one and your foot-pounds of energy. But that's, like I said, that's on the lowest setting. Um, and you can play with that anywhere in between. All that does is regulate the amount of air that goes into the transfer port. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a test. How many shots we can get out of high power, how many shots we can get out of low power. So stay tuned for the next segment. Okay, let's do a quick trigger test and check, uh, check our Achilles for uh, 
pull weight. Now, keep in mind, this is a non-adjustable trigger. You can adjust the trigger shoe on it in here. You can change the angle on that or the height on it, but the trigger itself is non-adjustable. So let's see how it is. All right. Okay, that's one pound, uh, 8.2 ounces. One pound, 8.2 ounces. Under two pounds, not a bad trigger. It actually feels pretty good. It's a two-stage trigger, um, but not bad. Uh, my only little gripe is there's no adjustment on it, except for the trigger shoe. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's see how our Aquila does on accuracy. Um, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to shoot five rounds. Could shoot more, but five rounds is good. We, we can just determine our grouping. We're at a usual 20 yards. Go ahead and take a look. What we're going to shoot here is we're actually going to shoot the H&N Hornets because I'm sure some of you guys are curious if the Hornets actually fit. They fit actually perfect in these magazines. Couldn't be any bit longer, but they fit absolutely perfect. And I found out that they're the most, one of the most accurate pellets. This gun is not overly pellet picky. It really isn't. You can pretty much shoot a variety of anything. But we actually got the most foot pounds of energy on these. I did a separate test on these and we were at like 33 and a half, almost 34 foot pounds of energy on these. So these get the best foot pounds of energy. So let's show you what type of accuracy. Um, I want to again. I want to thank Splatterburst for supplying us with these targets. These little guys. These are actually the size targets that I'm actually shooting on film. They seem bigger because I blow them up, so you can see the shots. But uh, that's the size targets that we're shooting. But I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in these. These are great because they're just really visible each time you hit hit around. Um, also, want to cover one thing. You saw in the previous. I had all three of my glasses here. I got shooting glasses, which I'm going to use now, but I had, if you saw the previous, uh, when I was doing the chronograph as well as the trigger test, I had all these on. I had this on my head, the, the, the actual sunglasses on my head, I had the reading glasses hanging here. It's tough getting old. You need glasses for every aspect of life, that's for sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, shoot our five shots, and uh, remember we're going for grouping. Let's see how well we do here. All right. Let's get this set up. A little bit of wind here. But let's see how well we do. That's one. That's two. Three. Four. Five. Well, we pretty much put them all through the same hole. Yeah, this thing has some amazing accuracy. And I told you, these H&N Hornets, unbelievable. The foot-pounds of energy you're getting out of them, the accuracy you're getting out of them, not too shabby, but look at that group. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, my favorite portion of the uh, review is always the plinking part because I get to shoot at something other than paper. Uh, we're going to shoot the same Hornets, the 16.20 grain Hornets. They do really well in this gun. Um, so let's see how well we do. We're at a usual distance. Let's go ahead and take a look here. You can see what we've got up there, a couple pigs. I got a lot of, uh, quite a few shotgun shells on their side and even uh, a little glass bottle with a teeny little cap on it. We're gonna see if we can hit those at 40 yards. A Little bit of a challenge because we do have some wind going today, but let's just see how well we do. All right. All right, let's start with the shotgun shell sitting on the edge there. That was a hit. What about that glass bottle? Oh yeah. Hit it right on the cap. Not too shabby. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get rid of that egg. Hits with some authority, definitely. Let's get rid of the uh, red pig. And finish it off with the white pig. Here you go. 
Yeah, like I said, you're getting about um, 33 and a half, 34 foot-pounds of energy with these pellets. Not too shabby. All right, so let's move on to the final segment. All right, so how we do overall? Not bad, but let's get into the negatives first, and then we'll uh, we'll go with the positives. Okay, first of all, my number one negative, and right out of the box, I saw this. Um, there's no barrel band on this. If you'll notice, the barrel is set in the breech here, and then nothing touches here, but I want you to watch this. See that little flexibility there? All they would have had to do is put a barrel band right here, and you would eliminate that flexibility. Not a big issue, especially if you're shooting in the backyard, but if you're taking this in the field and you're hunting with it, that potentially could be an issue. So hopefully they'll upgrade that, maybe put a barrel band on that. I think that would really, really help. So that's my number one negative. Uh, number two, it's not that big a deal at all, but see this Picatinny rail on the bottom here, right here? Okay, let me take the, uh, the bipods off real quick. See this? It mounts with one screw. Even if you tighten that screw up, this is still going to have a tendency, see this, to rotate. So that could still rotate, even if it's tight with the screw. So I would have suggested that they maybe mount that with two screws, and uh, you would eliminate that. But as you guys know, I I'm pretty picky when it comes to this stuff, but I'm just going to give you my honest feedback on this thing. Okay. In addition to that, I have one other little gripe. The trigger. Um, it's not adjustable. Now, it's not a bad trigger, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I would have preferred that it could be adjustable. But, it, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. Okay. Okay, so those are my negatives. Now let's get into the positives because I have uh, quite a few of those. Uh, number one, look at this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. This thing, and remember the cool factor? This thing is way up on the cool factor. This walnut stock is absolutely gorgeous. It's that um, Turkish walnut. I love the pistol grip set up on this. This thing feels really, really comfortable. It shoulders really nice. And I love this adjustable cheek rest. So you can move this thing back. And as I said, this won't be an issue for a right-hander or a left-hander, but you can move this back. You can set it at the exact height so you can rest your cheek on it. Now my suggestion is too, um, and I love the fact they have the Picatinny rail in here, but just make sure that you use higher mounted um, scope rings because you need to get that scope up to get your eye in line with this. But again, I do love this adjustable um, cheek rest. I think it's awesome. I also like the fact it comes with two 12 round magazines. That's fantastic. You always want two round, 12 round magazines, rather, because a lot of these guys will just come with one and you've got to buy the other one. And nowadays they're all pretty expensive. So, uh, also, I like the fact that it has this nice little foster fitting right here. And it has a nice solid cap, aluminum cap, that covers it. It's not a cheap cap. It's very, very nice. Um, also, I might not have covered this, the safety on this is right here. Let's see if you can see this in this angle, right here. Simply safe is back and then take the safe off as forward. It's just, it's that, that easy. All right, um, let's talk about, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, as far as velocity goes. They claimed a thousand feet per second. We got it. We got the thousand feet per second. They actually claimed you'd get up to about 32 foot-pounds of energy. We actually exceeded that. We got a, a little over 33 pounds of um, foot pounds of energy. And in fact, when we shot the uh, the H and N Hornets, the H and N Hornets were actually really good pellets in these. We got about 960 feet per second with these, and we got about 33 and a half foot pounds of energy, and really good accuracy, as you can tell. So. Um, it definitely met the expectations. Now, how many usable shots did we get out of this thing? I charted this thing um, completely for you. So from, from a full fill all the way down until we had no more useful shots. You get approximately 40 really usable shots. And that would be between 997 feet per second and 866 feet per second. And that's all the way from the 3,000 fill down to the 1700 PSI, 
Okay, so you can shoot it from 3,000 down to about 1,700, and that's on high power. Now, if you want the sweet spot on this, I identified the sweet spot for you, and it's the first 25 shots. The first 25 shots start out real close to that 1,000 feet per second, 997, you're right there, 998, 1,000 feet per second, and you work your way down to about 940, 41 feet per second. That's your sweet spot. So you're going to get 25 really good, high power, consistent shots. However, as I said, you will get 40 usable shots. And then for fun, I put this on the lowest power setting. Crank this thing down on the lowest power setting here. And I don't know if you can see this. Right here, there's a little, uh, a little guide right here on the, um, this part. And you can rotate this and it'll show you where you're at plus full power. And then you can rotate it all down the minimum. Now I rotated this all the way to the minimum and that's what you saw on the chronograph. But how many shots did we actually get out of it? Okay, so just for fun, I started at the 3,000 PSI fill, and I took it all the way down to 2,000 PSI. I got 75 shots out of it. Now, of course, they were at 400 and anywhere between 467, 466 feet per second, kind of in that whole range. A couple of them were up close to the 500 feet per second. But you got 75 shots at the low setting. Honestly, I don't know where you would use that low setting unless you just wanted to shoot some cans or something because the gun was really quiet uh, as far as on the low sweat setting. It was really quiet. I think we were like at the DBs were around 70, something like that. Very, very quiet. But uh, speaking of which, this gun is definitely backyard friendly. Now, one of the other things that was uh, just amazing was the accuracy on this thing. This accuracy on this thing was off the chart. You saw we shot a .18 of an inch, so uh, 18 tenths of an inch center to center at our 20 yards, okay, which is unheard of. That's basically all the pellets went through the same hole. Even at our 40 yards, we did our uh, plinking. And here's this little bottle out of that I shot at right here. You can see this. But I want you to see the end. Do you see? I put a round right through the cap on this, which was, I mean, at 40 yards. That's about mm, three quarters the size of a dime, just to get a perspective on that. So, yes, this gun is definitely accurate. And yeah, and I was shooting the uh, Hornets on that, but it's not overly pellet picky. You can use, um, you know, many different types of pellets on it. it. Just You might even find one that suits you even better. The trigger on this, remember I told you this was my negative? However, it's not a bad trigger. It broke at one point, one pound, eight ounces, okay? Yes, I do wish it was adjustable because maybe you can get to that one pound area or what have you, which I like a really light trigger, but it still was a really good trigger. You could feel the two stage. You could feel the first stage, you could feel it come up to a wall, and then it was a crisp transition uh, into the second stage where it actually engaged the rifle. So the trigger is not bad. It's very, very, very usable. So, and like, and like I said, again, I'm going to tell you, I, I like the fact it wasn't overly pellet picky. So, overall, how are we going to rate this gun? Um, like I said, it's, it's not inexpensive, but you do are getting a lot of gun here, and you're getting a five-year warranty. So, just remember that. You're getting a full five-year warranty. I would have to rate this rifle just the way it is. If it had an adjustable trigger, it would definitely bump this thing up, and a couple of the other things, a barrel band and that. But the way it's sitting, I'm going to give it four and a half stars. It's definitely a four and a half star. Um, and it would definitely be worth uh, being in your collection. Because I love, if you're a hunter, the, the compactness in this is just fantastic. It just, it shoulders so nice. It's very cool, too. All right. Um, don't forget, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. Have my shirt here. This is the new one. Um, other than that, don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. So until next time, stay safe and happy shooting. Take care.